I've been teaching risk adjustment coding for a little while now, so today I want to share my best tips for the CRC, Certified Risk Adjustment Coder Examination. Hey there coding crew, I'm Victoria. I'm a medical coder, auditor, educator, national speaker, blogger, podcaster, YouTuber for medical coding and on my channel I provide tips, tricks, and tutorials to help you succeed in a medical coding career. So if you're interested in medical coding, make sure you subscribe to this channel because I've got way more cool stuff than just exam tips. Now I know I ran a poll for some information on what you guys think I should do for next episode and there was a huge demand for CPC exam tips. Now I do have a whole listing but I think I want to make some extra things to go with that to help you kind of understand some of these coding concepts so that might take me a little extra time but today I'm going to do risk adjustment coding exam tips for 2020 and then later on I'm going to do CPC exam tips. Now, if you're watching this because you're just interested in the credential and about risk adjustment coding, you can find out more information from the free one CEU webinar that I have. I'll link that below. It's called Why Risk Adjustment Coders Are Making More Money. And I also have a complete risk adjustment course to prepare you for the CRC examination. It is $499, but because I love my coding community on YouTube so much, I offer $100 off if you use the link below and there are payment plans available. One of the first things I had students tell me tripped them up on the CRC exam was these Trump lists. And it has nothing to do with Donald Trump, the president of the United States. The Trump lists are um, HCCs that include other HCCs. So I'm going to show you an example of what some of these might look like on the exam and how you figure out which HCC you're supposed to drop. So if you have diagnoses that meet the criteria for HCCs 8, 9, 10, and 11, so we look at HCC 8 and it says we drop HCC 9, we drop HCC 10, we drop HCC 11, which means we get rid of them, drop, them, drop it like it's hot, drop it out of there, and you just report HCC Eight. So when they ask you what HCC is supposed to be utilized in that scenario, you would say HCC 8 because it includes the calculations for HCCs 9, 10, and 11. So those are already factored into HCC 8. So you would just report HCC 8 because and that is it trumps the rest of those diagnoses. Now, because a lot of the CRC exam is based on diagnoses, you need to know your ICD-10 CM guidelines. And if you don't, remember them exactly, like there's certain criteria that you're like, mm, a little foggy on that, make sure you at least know where to find it quickly in the guidelines. That's why I like the ICD-10-CM books that have the guidelines right in front of that specific chapter, because if I'm looking up that code, I can go right to the front of that chapter and I know where those guidelines for that code that I'm looking up are. So read your guidelines, reread your guidelines, re 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 read your guidelines because they are going to be testing you primarily on the usage of those guidelines in ICD-10 CM, especially your guidelines for diabetes, for hypertension with heart disease, for hypertension with chronic kidney disease, and make sure you know your guidelines for when you can and cannot report HIV and AIDS, as well as a lot of the cancer diagnosis guidelines. And on the topic of guidelines, also make sure you know your excludes ones versus your excludes twos. And this was something that even I had trouble wrapping my head around when I first started learning ICD-10 CM coding is those excludes ones versus excludes two. So the difference between the excludes one and two is exclude ones are like hard stops. You can't code them together. It's like that Taylor Swift song, you know, we are never ever ever getting coded together. We are never, ever, ever getting coded together. I'm not going to torture you any longer with my terrible singing because soon I'll hear my dog barking in the background. But anyway, excludes ones never, ever, ever together. Excludes twos are sometimes if both conditions exist because of those certain particular instances with those patients, in certain cases, you can build both of them together. 
The other tip is to make sure you tab your notes page. Like if you have a page where you just wrote all kinds of notes, like here's the things I think I might forget when I'm sitting down for the exam, make sure you put a tab on that page. I'm gonna try and do another video on just how to tab for your CRC exam because there is a difference of how you might tab for that versus a CPC exam because not all of those diagnoses get used in risk adjustment. I'm not a big tabby person. I think they oftentimes just get in my way when I'm flipping through. So I don't like to have an excessive amount of tabs, but I think I had maybe seven or eight different tabs of things that I wanted to make sure I marked in my ICD-10 CM manual when I sat for that exam, things like guidelines that were I knew pretty pertinent like diabetes or sepsis or something. And one of the notes you should probably make is what provider types you can abstract from because it's a big old listing of different provider types. And if you can't remember like, oh, can I abstract from a chiropractor? I don't remember. Like write a little note in it in your book and then put that on, put a tab on that so you can reference it easily during the exam, like right on the tab, notes. One thing that tripped me up with the exam, and I could see this tripping up other people, is in the various healthcare organizations that I've worked for, when they say MA, they usually mean medical assistance. But for the CRC exam, when they say MA, they're referring to Medicare Advantage. So that's completely different types of insurances and regulations. So you have to understand in this exam, it's, you know, a lot of this is ICD-10 CM coding, but you need to know a lot of other policies and regulation stuff. So you can't just go in here thinking this is a diagnosis coding examination. Um, because it's it's not so you need to know just even that little nuance that when they say MA it means Medicare Advantage those Medicare replacement plans the Geisinger Golds the uh, Blue Journeys the uh, you know Aetna Senior Blues those replacement plans for Medicare's are what they are talking about when they say MA plan. My other hot tip for the CRC exam is answer your non-coding questions first things that are just like knowledge questions that either you know them or you don't and you're not going to really be able to look them up in the diagnosis coding book. So if they're asking you questions about like HEDIS or STARS or terminology, try to knock those out first because those are ones like, like I said, you either know them or you don't. So answer those first and then you'll be able to move your way on to the ones that might take more time because you know the patient has 16 different diagnoses that you have to code out. And the last thing I want to stress upon is the risk adjustment factor calculation and how to calculate that payment to the insurance plan. So again, let me show you this other video that I made. Patient A is a 68 year old male. He has end stage renal disease, inflammatory bowel disease, diabetes with chronic complications, chronic pancreatitis, and congestive heart failure. So his RAF comes to 1.84 times a capitated monthly rate of $800 times 12 months in a year, his annual payment to the Advantage plan would be $17,664. Patient B is a little bit healthier. She's a 68-year-old female, diabetes without complications, and rheumatoid arthritis. So she has an RAF 0.849. So times our capitated monthly rate, she would have $8,150.40 to the Advantage plan for the care of her for the year. So I hope this video helped you out. If it did, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and I provide all kinds of other coding tips and tricks and tutorials. So if you're interested in that, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you get the alerts when I post all these other helpful episodes. I'll see you in the next episode and until then, just keep on coding on.